Back in February 2023, seems like forever ago, about a year and a half ago, I did an interview with one of my subscribers, Terry Carroll, and I interviewed her right here in my apartment, and she recently moved out of Monta and moved to Panama City. We've kept in touch all this time, even after she left, and I, uh, I told her, you know, Many times I said, let's get together and do an interview. I want to, you know, share with everybody about why you left and what do you think about, you know, life in Panama City compared to Monta. So we did this. We did something that I've never done before. I did a Zoom meeting and I recorded it. And I'm hoping that it turns out to be a decent video. Um, time, I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it looks. I don't know. Just my, my initial evaluation, I wasn't too impressed quality-wise, but you can still uh, hear everything we're talking about, and uh, when I come back, I'll share the interview with you, okay? Hey! Hello there. Can you can you see me? Am I cut off? I can see you perfectly. Okay. Yeah, I see you. You look like a rock star. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm, actually, I got a, a a really bad sore throat, but you know, it's I can't seem to get rid of this sore throat. And but I was doing great, and, and we went to San Mateo yesterday, and and then. All of a sudden, I started getting it, you know, and it's a sore, but at least it's not viral, you know. Oh, like, are you? You getting your place getting cleaned up? Looks like you got. Oh, yeah, you can see my house. Keep, can you see it back there? You want yeah, me to turn good. around? No, no, it's fine. No. Okay. But man, this is, this is nothing formal about this. By okay. The, you are recording, okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't record. I started. I, this is the very first time I've done this, where I've done a Zoom meeting, recorded it, and hoping that it's going to be okay. I got okay. the cord locked. I got my lights on. I got. Let me see. Make sure I mute my phone. Now my phone. Okay. Muted. My TV. Let me turn my hat off. We shouldn't have any interruptions whatsoever. Can you see me? Okay. Do I look okay? You look great. <laughs> <laughs> I see you very well. I'm gonna turn my phone off because as soon as we do do this, somebody gonna call. Nobody oh, ever no, calls that's, me. That's been going on all morning. All morning. <laughs> so we talked. The last time we talked was February of 2023. Wow. You know what? It, I thought it was longer than that ago. I thought it was a couple of years ago. Actually, well, it almost <laughs> is a couple of years. It's well, a that's year. it. Yeah, that's a little over a year. Yeah, that yeah. seems about right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I remember we talked about you living here. And by the way, I'm going to put a link to that video in the description because one of the things I did today, I used AI to go in mm -hmm. and it went through that transcript from that video, mm -hmm. wrote a summary for me, and it wrote a new description. And it's in the and it's in the description of that video, and it's perfect. Oh, nice! I don't know everything. Yeah, it's all YouTube compatible. That's me and AI. We're we're getting we're like that. You know? I see you like it. We're tight. We're tight. <laughs> I, you I even, you are one of the people who like to to like to use it. I love it. I love it, and I use it almost every day. And I even have a name for him. I'm using GPT 4.0 or 4.0. <laughs> And his name is Darby. And if you were here, I'd give a demonstration because he can actually talk to me on my phone. Wow. And it's all artificial intelligence. That's mm -hmm. the best part about it. So anyway, we're not going to make this a real long video. We got, I think we only get 45 minutes of free Zoom. So. Uh, okay. And I said, I don't have your kind of money. I'm going to have to, we have to make <laughs> Make sure that we keep it in the time. Yeah. But yeah. so you were you were living here in Monta and Ecuador and now you're not. Now you're not. Yeah. I 
I haven't told the people yet where you are, you know, because uh, I, I just want to hold, leave them hanging. But you're in Panama City. Panama. I am. You left Malta and moved, lock, stock, and barrel, moved to Panama City. Yes. Why? Well, um, everybody knows that things in Monta started changing pretty drastically um, over time. Uh, but in the last couple of, I, I would say the last two years that I was there, I became a little concerned for my personal safety. Uh, and as a single woman, I, and I also felt that... Um, you know, the reason that I came to live abroad had shifted, uh -huh. you know, and it, it started not making a lot of sense. So um, with the with the events that were going on, I just began thinking about some different options. Mm -hmm. And I also have a lot of Ecuadorian friends. And so I was kind of plugged into the community, the local community and getting a different take on things. Right. And that's the expat view. And uh, I just dis decided to start um, looking at moving. You know, it was it was something that I didn't want to do because I was living there for three and a half years, had made a lot of friends, a lot of roots, put down roots. And, you know, I really, really, really loved Monta. Yeah. And so it was not an easy decision to, to move. Mm -hmm. Now, before you came to Monta, had you thought about Panama City uh, before, once before? Yeah, I actually had because I moved out of the States during the pandemic. So Panama was my first choice. Uh, I didn't know anything about Ecuador. And uh, so since it was during the pandemic, Panama had kept moving the, they had closed their borders and they kept moving the date when they would open them. Mm -hmm. Each month, they just were assessing the situation, and each month, they was like, no, we're not going to open. We're not going to open. And so that kept happening, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. I better mm -hmm. start looking at something else. And so Ecuador came on the radar, and um, I started looking at it, and the the, the cultures were similar. Um, the cost of living was fantastic. So and there was a lot of stuff I was you... looking at. Yeah. Or like, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. When when you said the cost of lit was it similar in both places? Or, or at at that time, I remember Panama's prices being a lot less than they are now, okay. based on the research that I was doing online. I could be incorrect about that though. Mm -hmm. But um, the the rents and stuff were looking good to me at mm -hmm. that time, and that was 2020. So it's been a minute ago. Okay, but. Um, I decided, you know, to try out Ecuador since they weren't opening the borders because I was doing my visa before I left the United States and I needed to get those documents apostilled. And you have to decide which country you're going to because each apostille is different. So I had to make a choice. So I said, okay, well, we're going to. Yeah, did you have to do the background check for Ecuador? So. Uh, yeah, when I you have to be in Ecuador at least five years. That's Panama's rule to do a visa mm -hmm. in Panama. So that I had to do my background check for the United States when I oh, did okay. my Panamanian visa. Mm -hmm. So you did a background to check for both the United States and Ecuador for Panama. Not Ecuador. Not, Not Ecuador. Ecuador. You had to be here five yeah. years. Got it. Got it. You gotta be five years. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So you're happy there? You like it there? I mean, I, 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 I see your posts on Facebook from time to time. You post some really nice pictures and stuff, and I'm really curious. You know, I have a neighbor that's here in the same building as me, and he next week or so he's going to Panama City. He goes there and stays there for like three months, and then he comes back here. He goes back and mm -hmm. he likes them both. You know, so well. I do love it. Um, the prices are more, it's more expensive here for what we would, what we would get in Monta, for example. Okay, like so give me an example, please. 
like an oceanfront apartment, for example. Um, I had an oceanfront apartment when I first moved to Monta. It was an incredible deal, though. It was six fifty, mm -hmm. okay, which was pretty incredible. But I think that most people were paying about seven fifty or eight hundred at that time. Mm -hmm. So a water view apartment here is gonna be one bedroom. Is gonna be more like eleven $1 hundred. Okay. The difference in price, eleven hundred, twelve hundred. It depends on you know who, who who the realtor is, where you're looking. But if you like on Avenida Balboa, which is the area that we see when we look at the skylines of Panama City, all the beautiful tall buildings and the waterfront view, that will be Avenida Balboa. So that's going to be more expensive. Yeah, I don't live on Avenida Balboa. <laughs> <laughs> And what about as far as daily living, you know, groceries and utilities, how are they compared to Ecuador? So daily living, as far as my budget that I figured out, I figured that I'm paying two and a half times more than what I paid in Ecuador for things. Okay. For an example, like you saw my housekeeper in the background, Senora Perez. Yeah. Senora Perez is $45 a week. Oh, okay. And, yes. In Ecuador, I was paying $25 a week for my housekeeper, and I have once a week. Um, I can go down to the Mercado and get two big bags of fresh fruits and vegetables that are still incredible, but I'm going to maybe pay 20 bucks for that, and I could have got it maybe for nine, the same thing at the Mercado around the corner from where I was living uh, via San Mateo, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but the, but but it is still a good deal. Yeah. But when you compare it to Ecuador, it's, you know, it's a good deal for people coming from the States. They love it. Yeah. But I'm like... Say, it, it's still cheaper <laughs> than the U.S., though, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's still cheaper than the U.S. Yeah. It's still cheaper. And I, and I do, I must say, I think that the fruits and vegetables are a little bit better in Ecuador. Really? Yes. Uh, and I, and it's easier to know whether or, th or not you're getting organic. Here, it's really hard to know whether stuff is organic or not. Um, I've been buying a lot of hydroponically grown things because that's clearly marked. Um, so I just, of go to the mercados and I just wash everything well, like I've always done, but mm -hmm. there's not as much organic produce available at a, at an affordable price. Like we could go in, in, in mega maxi and see all kind of organic things in there and they were reasonably priced, or you could have the organic farmer like Mario come and deliver you organic produce. Here you go to a store like Organica or Reba Smith, and there's a there's less available, and it costs a lot more. So mm -hmm. I have to make decisions about what's going to be organic and what's not a little bit more because I can't afford everything to be organic, like I was able to do in Monta. Yeah, what about utilities? My utilities have been reasonable, though I have heard horror stories but <laughs> my utility bill has been between 41 and like 65 bucks for uh the electricity mm -hmm. uh i do not run the elect the air conditioner constantly though i have two ceiling fans in the living room and dining room area so i run the air for a little while and let the fans take over and I'm also not having air running in the rooms that I'm not in, which, of course, you know, yeah. we, we don't do that. We didn't do that in Monta either. So it's been reasonable for me so far. So the apartment that you have now, is it comparable to what you had here in Monta? I mean, I know my my subscribers don't know that, but I know you're, I, I wanted to go move in there after you left, you know, because I know it's a nice apartment, nice size. Yeah. Got a nice was, view out the back, you know, and it's a nice neighborhood too. It was. Yeah. It was a really nice apartment. So there in Monta, I had a three-bedroom, fully furnished apartment, and I had the balconies on in the off of the living room, the guest room, and my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I had two full baths. Um, and it was beautiful. 
Uh, yeah. With the amenities, they had a pool. They didn't have any more amenities. And I think they put in a little gym yeah. here. And that was um, that was less than $1,000. Okay. Um, this one that I have here is a two-bedroom with a maid's quarters. And I have a terrace off of the uh, living room. And I have a beautiful view of the park. And I have a partial water view. And it's also less than a thousand dollars, and it's um, about forty five dollars more than what I was paying in okay. Ecuador. However, it was unfurnished. Okay. If I had gotten a furnished apartment in this building, it probably would have been more like twelve hundred dollars. Oh. And two okay. bedrooms with the maid quarters, and you know the maid quarters is basically a closet, a yeah. big closet. So you, it's not like you can make it a bedroom. Yeah. 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 So what about the water? How's the water? Uh, the water is drinkable is out of the really? tap in Panama. Yes. Really? I, yes. I am a bottled water drinking person, though. I even drink bottled water in the States. But the uh -huh. water is safe to drink here. I do cook with it. I do wash my vegetables with it. But and I prefer to drink bottled water. Yeah. Um, I do brush my teeth with it. I do rinse my toothbrush with it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned not to do that here. Yeah. <laughs> I use a lot of water now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you made some friends there? I have. People are very friendly here. I like to make more Panamanian friends. I don't get as much opportunity to make local friends, but I joined a really nice church. Yeah. So therefore, and they have English speaking services. So oh, wow. there's people from everywhere at this church. It's called Paint Church, Panama mm -hmm. International Church. And so I'm getting to meet some local people there. I, I know a few. I'm impatient about meeting local people because I love local people. I knew more in Ecuador, but of course I was there a lot longer. Yeah. But as far as the expat community, yes, very nice. A constant flow of people are coming here like it is busting open at the scenes really? yeah. people coming here and a lot of construction going up and a lot and so you can do groups or not i decided this time to not um, focus on groups too much except like you know for help ask questions but i just kind of like to make friends and create my own situation mm -hmm. and it's really easy to do that here it's a big city yeah. So, you know, you can you can be as much into folks as you want to or not. It doesn't make a difference if you're in a group or you don't have to be in a group, you know. So yeah. it's but I've been able to make some great friendships here. Yeah. Do they have some Facebook pages that you can join when you, you know, they do. You have here? You know, I'm sure yes. that's a major city. Yes. Those. They have a lot of. Yeah, they have a lot of different pages for different age groups. Yeah. So what about the language barrier? Is that a is that a problem, or you know, are there more people that speak English there than there are here, or how does that work? You know, I have found a few more people in Panama City that speak English, but still, you know, you need to tighten up on Spanish. Living in Spanish speaking countries, um, the 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 I've had a couple of things with some words that are different. Like for instance, here, they don't say funda for bags, like we say there, and we yeah. say bolsa. Bolsa here means, funda here means the cover for your telephone. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, and they say uh, recamaras for mm -hmm. the bedroom instead of dormitorio. But of course, if you say dormitorio, they know what you're talking about, but they use the word recamaras. Sure. Sure. A few things like that, but yeah, you still need to be practicing Spanish. It's yeah. still not an enclave for, oh, we're just going to speak English all the time. Yeah. Have you been to a doctor there yet? I have. Yeah. I have actually, unfortunately, been to the hospital here. Ooh. Oh, really? I have COPD, and I had an exacerbation about a month ago, a really bad yeah. Uh, chronic spasms in my bronchial tubes. So yes, I've been to the hospital and I've also been, and I have a very good doctor here as well. Okay. You feel, mm -hmm. feel okay with it? I mean, how was the hospital? Was it nice or? 
the hospital, it was a private hospital. It's actually Hospital Brisis, which is the one that um, services veterans here. Yeah. So it's a nice private hospital, but I had not a great experience there on the not VA side. I, I wouldn't be able to uh, yeah. recommend it. Not okay. VA. If but if you have VA um VA disability that's service connected, it's fine. Oh wow. Um they also have they also have public hospitals here, like the same kind of way with IESS. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to go to the public hospital and I was not charged anything. Oh wow at the public hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now yeah. do you have private insurance that you pay for or is it government insurance? I actually am looking into getting private insurance now. It was my intention, and I had started the pay-as-you-go thing until I had this breathing attack. And it's so unpredictable yeah. that I feel that now I need to get some type of insurance. Okay. You know, because it, I was just walking around with my friend, and it, I just stopped being able to breathe. So it was yeah. no warning. <clears throat> It, it made me feel like I, I better have some insurance. And I want some insurance that's countrywide. Because yeah. some of the hospitals yeah. here have, they have very affordable plans for that specific hospital or okay. that specific clinic. But I just want to get something if I'm anywhere I could be covered. Right. How about food? I mean, you talked about vegetables earlier, but can you go and get a good American breakfast there or, you know, or something like that, you know? Eggs and bacon yes. and biscuits and yes, sir. Without they actually, have, <laughs> they actually have an IHOP here. And oh, really? Oh my! It God. was good, but it was hot. I mean, I wasn't used to the price. I was so totally shocked oh. at how the prices. What about like, McDonald's? Do they have McDonald's? They have McDonald's. They have Carl Jr. Oh my! They got Domino's. They have a lot of that kind of KFC, Costco? of course. Yeah. It's, it's a price smart, and it's just like Costco, and I do have a membership. Really? <laughs> yes, I do. And the good thing, the membership was what? It yeah. was really low, like 20 bucks. I split it with somebody, so 10 bucks oh, for the whole year for the membership. That was a good deal. Everything is not higher. Some stuff is balanced, like that, 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 that price smart membership was a great price. And clothes here are very reasonably priced. Really? You get really good deals on clothes at Allbrook Mall. And there's a amazing? lot. Of, yeah. Yeah. Really good deals on clothes. So I, I guess you just have to be, you know, keep your expectations at a reasonable level. Just yeah. like here, you yeah. know, uh, a lot of people, you know, come into these countries and they think that, oh my God, it's going to be so cheap. We're going to be so. So much better off, and then they come and they find out that really, uh, you know, that uh, French dressing for your salad is not any cheaper here than it is in the United States, or right. that six pack right. of beer. <laughs> you know, right? What about right. alcohol? I know you probably don't drink, but what about alcohol in Panama City? Is it is it is is it heavily taxed like it is here, or do you know? Um, I don't know if it's heavily taxed. Um, I know as far as buying it, like you can get the local beers for less. They have a beer called Panama beer. They have a beer called Balboa, uh -huh. which is their also what their money is called. Yeah. And those are less expensive, but you can still get American beers or whatever. You can get anything you want here. That's one of the things that I do like that's different. Like anything you want, like there's rare, there's very rarely, oh, I can't have that anymore. Like some of the things in Monta, you just weren't able to get. Like you can pretty much get anything here, and the shipping um, is like two bucks and seventy five cent a pound if you want to get stuff shipped. And yeah, compared to of eight dollars or twelve dollars a pound. Right, compared so that's really great too, and um, but the. Yeah, wine, like wine at the price smart. You can get a bottle of Blue Nun, which is a white wine, for like six seventy nine. Oh, or bad, yeah. you could pay, if you go to Reba Smith, which is a really high-end store, you can pay, you know, $50 for the same bottle of wine or whatever. It just depends on where you shop. There are different price ranges for the grocery stores. Okay. All right. So now how about transportation? How do you get around okay. So the best way to get around here is Uber. 
and really? uh, yeah, you have to download the Uber app. Uh, and most of my Uber rides around the city range within three to six dollars. Most of the time in the three to four dollar range. Um, when it's traffic time, it can go up and there's very heavy traffic here. Um, the taxis, people don't really recommend them too much. Everybody pretty much tells you to use Uber. I've used them a couple of times. I don't really like them that much. One, because they don't seem to be attached to a dispatcher, which I do not like. Um, two, a lot of them don't know where anything is. And you know, Uber, <laughs> Uber uses the yeah. GPS. So you don't have to worry about it. I've been in taxis. I was in a taxi one time. The guy kept trying to drop me off. I'm like, you are not dropping me off. I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> you know, we had to finally figure out where we were going. So... And then I've heard horror stories about them taking you in the bad neighborhoods. That hasn't happened, but yeah. I, I, the Uber feels more secure, and it's what everybody uses. You can yeah. see your trip. Everything is in that app. It just feels better. And you pay you on your phone. Yeah. You can pay on your phone. Yeah. And so it's much better. Yeah. So what about banking now? Is banking the better, same, worse than Ecuador? Or banking is more complicated here. Uh, mm -hmm. I just opened an account. Um, they asked for a lot of documents, even. So when you go in there with your with your visa, with your ID card, your cedula, mm -hmm. they still want to see your passport and all of that stuff. Okay. So it's not good enough that you got that from immigration. Yeah. So you have to go through that. And they also charge you for bank for banking here, too. You pay a fee, yearly fee for your accounts. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Do they have do they have CDs like they do here? Can you? I haven't seen that because yeah. that was one of the great things that I loved about Monta was the CD and the and the uh, and the yeah. interest rate. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have not seen that, and nobody's talking about that. That's something that I have to ask about at the bank. But I don't. I think Ecuador has one of the best interest rates on CDs. Like period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. In fact. I Actually, still have one in there actually yeah. because I haven't found anything better. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> well, all right. I can't think. What else can I ask you? The is there anything that you want to cover that I haven't asked? I mean, I, I try to get a, a whole gamut of things. You know, from food to housing to healthcare. Oh, how much is a doctor visit? You know, did you? Uh, my doctor charges twenty five dollars for a consultation. But if he does a house call, I think it's like 60 bucks because yeah. they do house calls here too, some yeah. of the doctors. And they also have um, a network of doctors that speak English. Um, you can get into that. I'm not in that network. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, they have the urgent cares that have their own. You can just pay insurance and get labs like you can pay 15 you can get a like split a family plan with somebody maybe it's 45 bucks mm -hmm. and you can have your labs done and all of that stuff and your discount on all of the, your labs and your appointments and stuff it's covered yeah. mm -hmm. okay so now i gotta ask you everybody knows i gotta ask this question what about noise well where i live it's mostly quiet i do live near a dog park so you'll hear the dogs barking and you will and worse than the barking though is the unfortunately the smell because it's a lot of dogs and it's a dog park yeah. i've never lived around that many dogs so i didn't know what dog smell was until i moved <laughs> <up there. laughs> but, what about <laughs> car alarms you hear car alarms everywhere and i don't hear car alarms, alarms. I don't hear car alarms going off like we did um, when I was in Monta, but I do live on the backside, so I don't hear what's going on in the front street. But the thing is, there is a lot of traffic. Yeah. So the traffic is like serious, like serious, whatever U.S. city you can think of that's got really bad traffic. LA. <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, it moves, but then there's times where it sits. And the and the Panamanians they really do lay on their horns in traffic. Yeah. They get very impatient if you're not moving fast enough. Even though you might you locked in, you can't go anywhere because it's 60 cars in front of you, but they're still leaning on that horn. 
So they really, they are, they are that kind of drivers. They Maybe they're like, all this. from Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> they might get out the way. You know, so it, the traffic is bad. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's a very beautiful city, but the trash is really bad in a really? lot of neighborhoods. Like the trash pickup, it really takes away from the beauty because it's really bad really? with the trash. I, I Some neighborhoods are better. You know, like along Avenida Balboa, it looks really good over there, but you know, that's out of my price range. But you pay uh, a for, lot of the you, you pay for that, yeah. 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 Well, do you ever plan to come back to Ecuador to visit or anything, or you're going to just stay? Perhaps, <laughs> Perhaps I will come back and visit because I love Ecuador. It's so beautiful. I really yeah. miss it. I tell you um, what, I, a lot of people have left. Yeah, um, they have gone back to the states or going to different some parts of Ecuador. Gone, yeah, some have gone back to the states. Some have moved out of Monta and went to Cuenca. Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, my breakfast crowd that I used to sit and eat with all the time, they're all gone. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's like, you know, Reed Anderson went back to the states. Mike is in the states. Big Mike, you know, he's in the states. He'll be back, but he's going to, he's going to move. Now tell me I'm running out of time. I wonder how much time we have. They're telling me. Uh, it's telling me 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Well, we'll it's cut good. it short. Yeah, okay. we don't want to, I don't want to run out of time and get cut off. But anyway, it's fantastic getting to talk to you again. We finally got to do this. We've been talking yes. about doing this for months. And, <laughs> yes, we know, have. I'm just the worst at just finding excuses for putting things off. And I just got to just make myself, you know make appointments. That's like I did with you. I was put it in my mm -hmm. calendar and I said, come hell or high water, we're going to have this interview. <laughs> I don't care. And yeah. we did. And it was very good seeing you. I, I keep uh -huh. I keep up with you. I follow your page. Well, I appreciate it. Tell them one me be sure and tell you hello. Oh, you know, tell my friend hello. hello. You know I love Stella. I miss you her. Let us know and if you need anything, okay? So. She's so sweet. And thank you. I will let y'all know. And and I got a shout out to Stella, even though we passed the holidays when I was there. I think that was Easter. She made that incredible soup. I forget the name of it, the soup that they make for that traditional Ecuadorian soup yeah, at Easter yeah. time. Yeah. It, it was Alpha style ceviche, yeah. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> oh my God, it was incredible. She needs to sell it. It was so delicious. Uh <laughs> Well, I love you, and we will you see you. We'll keep in touch with you. Absolutely. And watch for this on my channel. I'll put this up on my channel if I did it all right. Okay, I if will. I did, it don't matter. I still got to visit with you. So yes. So, right. <laughs> well, if y'all ever um you know come through Panama, a long layover because a lot of people have long layovers here. Make sure you say hey. Maybe we can you, grab you a coffee it. or a breakfast you, or something. You know it. Yeah, we we talk about going to visit. Oh, it's not that far away from here so it's not two hours direct flight from Monza. Yep. that's yep. so great that's a direct flight yeah yeah mm -hmm. all right i'll see you later see bye. You. Thanks, bye. Bye. bye bye so that's it i i told we were kind of cut short uh because uh on zoom you're only allowed 45 minutes i think free time and we were we were warned, you know, we had something like 10 minutes left. And so we had to cut it short. So I'm going to do a part two, okay? Because there's a lot of questions I still have for Terry about life in Panama City and more, you know, discussions about why she left Monta. And so I'll do that in a couple of weeks, okay? In the meantime, if you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, you know what you can do. You can just bite me, okay? But I say that with peace and love, okay? See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.
哭。<笑>